Well, welcome once again to Everlasting Faith Fellowship. I'm glad you're here with us today. And we're going to be talking about how to access God. That's right. Because, <clears throat> you know, in this age of communication, we hear all kind of what we call buzzwords, like on the Internet. We all want a fast connection, don't we? We want to be able to download things fast. We want to have direct access to we want the information we're seeking and we want to get it fast. We don't want to wait for slow connections, right? So today we're beginning a new series called How Do We Access God? They don't have flow. We don't need UTS. We don't need any of that. Last month we looked at what the Bible had to say about who is the object of our worship. What did we discover? We discovered that God is love, that he'll never fail us, that he's, <clears throat> he's always good because... He is goodness, amen? Now, since he is the object of our worship prayerfully, then wouldn't it be great if we could have direct access to him at all times? Let's see what the Bible says. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to what? To our prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. So if I told you that you were going to have the opportunity to talk with Jesus Christ for 15 minutes today, and you could make one request of him, what would your request be? Amen? Think about it. If you could ask him anything, would you ask for protection maybe? Uh, keep you from getting the virus, right? For better health, really? Maybe a new job. Maybe you need some money. What would you ask him for? Well, let's get some insight to that question from what the disciples of Jesus said. We now go to the book of Luke, chapter 11, beginning in first part of verse 1. It says, Once Jesus was in a certain place and he was praying. And as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, 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 teach us how to pray. We don't know how to pray. So why, of all the things they could have asked for, did they ask that question? I think it was because they saw the results of prayer in, in Jesus' own life. Because they saw him pray, and they saw the results. The disciples had watched Jesus preach the greatest sermons ever, right? Right? They had been there when he performed miracles, but never once did they say, Lord, teach us how to preach, right? Or Lord, teach us how to do miracles or how to raise the dead. No. What are they asking for? Lord, teach us how to pray. Amen? From watching the example of Jesus, these men, they knew that prayer was the key to what they needed in their lives. And as you know, we always begin our worship service with prayer because prayer is one of the most important, yet also one of the most neglected things. And it's the way to access God that he has offered to us through prayer. So today we're not going to talk about any boring, lifeless prayers that mean nothing and change no one, no. We're going to learn how to pray in, in such a way that our lives are, are changed. Not only our lives, but the lives of people around us, amen? So pay attention, amen, because if you're willing to learn some of the principles that I'm going to be sharing with you today, and you actually apply them, amen, to your life circumstance, I promise you that you'll begin to experience real demonstrable, measurable, life-changing results. All right, everybody got their seatbelts fastened? Here we go. So today we're going to learn quattro, four basic principles of accessing Dios, of accessing God through prayer, and we'll be taking most of our instruction from the book of John, chapter 15. So what's the first thing? Number one, when we access God in prayer, what are we doing? We're declaring 
our dependence on God. We need to depend on him. When we're playing, we say to God, yo, I, I, I need you, God. I need you. But for some reason, many of us have a problem admitting this, amen? Maybe it's part of our mindset. We value independence, right? Hard work and making it on our own. We don't need anybody else. Now, that could be a good thing, right? But if you learn anything when you come to Jesus Christ, it's that you don't have the ability, amen, to make it spiritually on your own. Y'all need some help. Watch this. <clears throat> the reason why a lot of people don't pray is because they don't want to be honest with themselves. Amen? They don't want to admit that they're inadequate, that they're helpless, that they need God's help. No. Because as long as you think that you're self-sufficient, prayer will not have a meaning for you. Amen? Let's look at what the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 5. It says, listen, I am the vine. You are the branches. And those who remain in me, Jesus said, and I in them will produce much fruit. Because apart from me, Jesus says, y'all can't do nothing. Verse 6, anyone who does not remain in me, whoa, is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, they put them in a pile and they burn them, Jesus said. And in verse 7 he says, but if you remain in me and in my words, the Bible, amen, remain inside of you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. So God says then, if you really place your dependence in him, you can ask him for whatever you want and he's going to give it to you. Is that unbelievable? Amen. But hold it. We need to notice that the promise is for those who are what? Dependent not only on Christ, but, he have, but have his words within them. Amen. So this type of person, hopefully all of us, is in touch with God and his will and prays accordingly. Because he will give you everything that's in his will. So don't be asking for stupid stuff. That's not going to do you any good. That's not the will of God. The will of God is to make you more like him. Amen. It's like a branch and a vine. Jesus said the branch is connected to the vine. So you cut the branch off. What happens? It loses its strength. If you cut a Christian off from God, what happens? He withers away. Some time ago, there was a TV documentary about uh, divers who were deep sea divers. They went into the ocean and they had discovered some gold from a sunken ship. Uh, it was in the North Atlantic Ocean. They talked about how they felt inside that little bitty, what they called a diving bell that was lowered over 800 feet into the water. And the only link between them, 800 feet below the surface, and those in the boat above was a little air hose. The hose was really their lifeline, wasn't it? It was their support system, the connection between those above and those below. Without that lifeline, they withered away and died. Well, prayer is our support system, amen? It's a connection between God above and us below. If you cut it off, we run out of spiritual air. Amen? And until we realize the depth of our need for God, we can't access Him in prayer. Amen? All right, what's the second thing? Number two, when we access God in prayer, what, what happens? We grow in our relationship with God. And I'm sure we all experienced meeting somebody for the first time, whether it was at school, at work, or wherever, right? At first, your relationship is kind of casual, right? You might speak about, boy, we had some nice weather today. But then as you begin to know each other, you start finding, oh, you like to do that too? Yeah, I, I like doing that. As the relationship grows, you might start talking about things that were on your mind, what concerns you, Amen. You might find that your relationship has changed from a mere acquaintance to becoming friends. 
Well, the more time you spend with God, what happened? The nature of your relationship changes as well. You're not going to become more saved or more attractive or get more blessings, but your relationship will change from that of a master or servant to a master or friend of God. Amen? Let's look in John 15, verse 15. Amen? He says, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything that the Father has told me. Verse 16, Jesus says, listen, you didn't chose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask using my name. Now, prior to this message, this passage, Jesus had been confiding in his disciples concerning his impending death on the cross. So now he brings the relationship to a whole new level. He was now sharing with them as a confident, not as just a servant. He promised them something very interesting. Check it out. Look at this. Notice that the intimacy in prayer doesn't lead to the production of fruit. Rather, the opposite is true. Producing fruit leads to intimacy. So in verse 16, it states, I appointed you to go and do what? Produce lasting fruit. In other words, go let others know about me so that the Father will give you whatever you ask using my name. So what's what happens? We build our relationship with God by becoming like him through a life of righteousness and dedication to his kingdom agenda. Amen? And as we produce lasting fruit, what does God promise us? Whatever we ask, because if we ask it by the authority of Jesus Christ. So what happens to our relationship? We live for God. We pray to God, right? He grants us whatever we ask through Jesus Christ, and we live through God again. It's a continuous cycle, amen? It's a relationship based on friendship, based on understanding and mutual purpose in life. So as we live for God, we understand His will, and our relationship grows. So He speaks to us not only through His Word and through the Holy Spirit, but through answering the requests that we ask of Him. So I think it's important to note that God does not invite us to call Him friend, but He feels free to address us in this way. Why, why is that? Because God is always God, amen? He's always the Creator, the Sustainer, the Holy One, but through His love, through His love and through His Son, he invites us to approach him, not as a servant, but as his friends. Amen? He tells us, we no longer call us serv ourselves servants because a master doesn't confide in servants. He said, now you are my friends. He still remains the master, but we move from servant to friend. Amen? What else? Number three, when we access God in prayer, we ask and we receive from God. Actually, some people actually think that we should never ask God for anything. And if we have to, oh, keep it to a minimum. Don't be asking him for too many things. They really believe that the more mature Christian becomes, the less likely they're going to request from God. And the more they will spend their time just praising his name. That's the biggest bunch of nonsense I've ever heard. God wants us to ask and receive from Him in prayer. He loves us. He wants to give us. The more we truly believe in His ability, the more we will ask Him for. Amen? Let's look at this. Don't take my word. Let's, look, let's see what the Scriptures say. John 15 and 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, amen, you may ask any request you want, and it will be granted. Whoa. How about John 15, verse 16, the first part of it? The Father will give you whatever you ask using my name. 
Let's keep going. John 16, 24. He said, you haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. Whoa. It doesn't stop there. Luke 17 and 6. Even if you had the faith as small as a mustard seed, which is really tiny, <clears throat> you could say to this mulberry tree, the Bible says, may God uproot you and throw you into the sea and it would happen. Here's the most incredible one. Mark 11, verse 23. He says, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain over here, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it'll happen. But you really must believe it'll happen and no doubt in your heart. And in verse 24, he says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you truly believe, you receive it. It will be yours. That's an important thing to remember. When we pray, we have to truly believe that God can do something. When we pray for healing, we said, whoa, man, I got this terrible, I know he can't do it, but I'm going to pray. It ain't going to happen. You have to truly believe it. And then you have to have patience. God doesn't give you something as soon as you want it. He gives it to you when you when he knows it's best for you to receive it, amen? So what is he saying? He's saying that the power of faith is as unlimited as the power of, the power of God, amen? If we truly believe, we will, what? Receive, amen? Look at your friend, neighbor next to you and say, listen, if you truly believe, you will receive, amen? Do you believe that God can use the church to lead thousands of people to Jesus Christ? That you yourself can impact your neighborhood. You can impact your family. You can impact your workplace. You can make an impact for Jesus Christ because God has the power to fulfill your dreams. Glory, hallelujah, amen? Okay, if you believe that, why aren't you praying those kind of prayers? You see, there are a number of reasons that prayers aren't answered, but the big, biggest problem, like I said, is because of our lack of belief. When we read the New Testament and read about the early Christians, it's a mind blower. They were happy, they were joyful, contagious, and they were enthusiastic about life. They had power in their lives. They saw miracles on a regular basis. If you were a to ask, to ask a typical New Testament era Christian, hey brother, how's that going? He'd say, eh, business as usual, one miracle after another, new converts coming to Christ every day. Wow. And then we say, how come I don't have that kind of power? It's because we don't ask at that level, amen? The bigger our requests, the bigger our belief in God has to be, amen? Listen, you ought to get tired of asking God to do things you can do on your own, right? Oh, God, help me bring this, this box over to the other side. Just do it. Start asking God for things that can't be accomplished by anybody else but Him, amen? What are you lacking in your life right now? Simply because you never asked God for it. Maybe you tried to get things done or wanting something to happen or wanted something in your life for somebody else, but you never stopped to ask God for it, amen? What do you ask for? <laughs> ask for what you want. Let's go to the book of Psalm, verse 37, chapter 4. I mean, chapter 37, verse 4. Take delight in the Lord, and what will happen? He will give you your heart's desires, amen? Now, what kind of desires is the psalmist talking about? If you're deli delighting yourself in God, and you're trying to your best to let God's Spirit live in your life, then your desires are going to be the right ones. They're not going to be wrong desires. Why? Because your desires will be the same as God's desires and God promises that he will give you what you ask for. Amen? 
Psalm 84, verse 11. The Lord will withhold no, what kind of thing? Good thing, not bad thing. No good thing from those who do what is right. Amen? Listen, brothers and sisters, God is not up in heaven, heaven holding all things back and saying, you got to convince me to give them to you. No, he's saying, listen, just ask me. Just ask me. Do you know that when you ask, everybody gets blessed? That's right. What happens? God gets blessed. Why? Because it shows his nature as a giver. <laughs> you get blessed because you get the answer to your request. And the world gets blessed because all of a sudden you got a testimony, amen? And testimony is powerful, amen? It'll bring others to know God's word. People who have answered prayers cannot and should not keep it to themselves. They need to share it, amen? They start sharing with everybody and that's what God wants. What else happens when we access God in prayer? We build the kingdom for God. I think this is the most exciting thing about prayer. It's an act of cooperation with God in the building of his kingdom here on earth. Prayer is God's program. <clears throat> prayer is God's mode of operation. Prayer is God saying, I have chosen no limit. God is saying that what I accomplish on earth is only limited by my faith of my children on earth. That's what God is saying. So what they believe me for, God says, I will do. And when we pray for other people, we are cooperating, amen, with God because we're helping him accomplish what he wants to accomplish here on earth. We're teaming up with God to accomplish God's worth in the world. Maybe the most amazing verse in the Bible is John chapter 14, verse 11. It says, Just believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do, he says. I tell you the truth. Anybody who believes in me, Jesus said, will do the same works that I have done. And look what else he says, even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. In other words, Jesus said, listen, you saw me do all those things. If you believe in me and the things I believe in, you can do the same thing and even greater things because I'm going upstairs right now. You're down here to do the work. I'm leaving you all to do my work. And who's going to do it? Anybody who believes and truly believes, amen? Have you been doing what Jesus has been doing today, amen? Have you been raising any dead people? Have you healed any sick? This might be the hardest verse in the Bible to believe, right? He says, anyone who believes in me will do the works I have done, even greater works. So what do you think? Is that verse something that you can believe in? Do you really think you can do greater things in Jesus, like it says? Do you see yourself doing greater miracles in Jesus? I doubt it, because that, that's really hard to believe, that verse, isn't it? That's probably the hardest verse in the Bible to believe. But then again, Jesus says it. And if we read the next two verses, I think it'll make some sense. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 13. <clears throat> Jesus said, you can ask anything in my name and I'll do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So how is it possible then to do greater miracles than Jesus? Simply through prayer because the verse says, ask anything in my name. Prayer isn't limited by time, by space. It has no limits. When Jesus Christ was here on earth, 
he voluntarily limited himself by becoming a human. And by God coming in human form, he said, I can only be at one place at a time. He was limited to do the miracles within the vicinity of where he was. <clears throat> but prayer is not limited by any time or space. The prayers of Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago are still being answered today, amen? You see, the prayers we pray today can be answered three weeks from today, a month from today. Prayer isn't limited by space. You can pray and it's like sending up a missile, right? <clears throat> I could pray for somebody in California and it's like sending a missile directly to that guy's heart. Hey, and I'm still here, right? People may reject your appeals. They might reject your arguments. They might reject you as a person. But they're totally defenseless against your prayers. They can't reject that. There's no prayer defense system, amen? They go straight to the heart. Like a river, God can change the course of history by prayers. And guess what? He will use us and our prayers and our faith to build his kingdom. I want not only our church, but all churches to be praying churches. Amen? Now look what God said in Isaiah 56, verse 7. <clears throat> I will bring to them, I will bring them to my holy mountain of Jerusalem, and I will fill them with joy in my house of prayer, I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple will be what? Called a house of prayer for all nations. And that's what we plan to be, a house of prayer for all nations, for all people groups, no matter what color or walk of life, everyone will be welcome in this house of prayer and hopefully all churches, amen. My hope and prayer today is that you not only realize the importance of what we were talking about today, but that it moves in your heart and changes your life. Today is the day to begin direct access to God in prayer. When we access God in prayer, we declare our dependence on God, we grow in our relationship with God, we ask and receive from God, and we build the kingdom for God. And remember, we grow in prayer. Remember that last that verse we were reading, like, wow, can we actually do what Jesus did? In order to do that, we have to have the same faith as Jesus. It doesn't happen right away. We have to keep on communicating with God, relying on his word, and, and growing in Christ. And we'll be able to do what they said we can do. Amen? But we can't just stop studying and reading God's word and praying. We have to continue to do that. That's how we grow. That's how we, our faith becomes stronger and stronger. That's how our belief becomes stronger and stronger. We accomplish more things for the kingdom. <clears throat> Look at Peter 1 and 3rd chapter 1, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 12. I'll get it here. The eyes of the Lord do what? They watch over those who do right. And his ears are open to our prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those, uh-oh, who do evil. Amen? Let's finish up with prayer. Amen? Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the ability that you've given us through, through prayer. The ability to accomplish things that we could never accomplish on our own the ability to accomplish the things that you have planned for us to accomplish here on this earth. So help us to utilize what you've given us, that avenue of, of connection between us and you through prayer to a, so that we can accomplish what you placed us here to do. Help us not to think that we can do everything on our own that we're so great that we can accomplish things without your help. We need you, Lord. Help us to understand that. Help us to know that. And help us to let others know that so that we're not just the only one to have somebody to rely on, but those that are lost will come to you also. 
Help us to bring them so that they too can have somebody to rely on. We thank you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we thank you right now for, for being with us. Amen. And we just pray that you'll do what God asks you to do. See you all next time. God bless. Mm -hmm.